How do you make it through a party when you don't know anyone? Hey everyone, I'm Harris O'Malley from DrNerdLove.com, and this is Ask Dr. Nerd Love, solving your dating dilemmas and answering your questions about love, sex, dating, social skills, and general geekery. Now, since this is going to be the last episode of 2017, instead of just answering one person's question, I've decided to answer several. After all, we are headed straight into the heart of holiday party season, and a lot of you have questions about how to make parties something that could be a social success instead of something that you just have to endure until the social contract says that you're allowed to leave. Incidentally, the answer is after the coffee has been served at a dinner party or about 45 minutes after saying hello to the host at larger, more informal gatherings. Now, parties are a great place to meet people, especially if you hate doing cold approaches. The advantage of parties is that by their very nature, you are set up to do what is known as a warm approach. That is, you are meeting people with whom you already have a social connection. That may be that you have friends in common or that you go to the same school or some other thing that you already share. The other advantage of parties is that unlike meeting people at bars or clubs or at coffee shops, you have a greater amount of social proof. By virtue of having been invited, you have been pre-vetted as someone who is worth getting to know and worth talking to. It's a case of you must be cool because if you weren't, you wouldn't be here. But as much as parties can be fantastic places to grind out your social meter, for some people they can also be a special circle of hell, particularly if you are shy, introverted, or just don't know what the hell to do. So in answer to many, many of your letters, here are my top five tips for how to survive a party. This one trips a lot of people up. You hit the party and you realize that you know a grand total of uh, maybe three people if you're lucky. Now you have a choice. Either you spend the entire party clinging to the three people that you know, like a lovesick barnacle, or you spend the rest of the party hugging the wall and checking Twitter on your phone. And okay, as someone who desperately needs to break his addiction to his phone, I do a little bit of that too. Now in fairness, parties can be intimidating. You are coming into a space where it feels like everybody knows everybody else and you are the odd man out. Trying to join conversations can be difficult when it feels like everybody there has these long-standing relationships and you're the outsider trying to barge in. But the point of parties is to bring people together and mix things up. You are expected to talk to people you don't know and make new friends. So joining a conversation even when you don't know anybody, is completely acceptable and expected. If you're up for going over and talking to people on your own, then you want to be on the lookout for two things. First, check the body language of the group. Are they really huddled up tightly, focused inwards on one another? If so, that is a more closed off group and it's a lot harder to get into it and you'd be better off talking to somebody else. On the other hand, if they are more spread out, if there is more room between everybody and they are not so focused inwards, they're less of a circle and more of a U shape, then it is very easy to join that conversation. They are an open group. Go over, stand next to somebody, listen in, and find your opportunity to share your thoughts. The other thing to do is to watch for what is known as the three to two rule. Conversations can't really survive more than four people. Once you have more than four people, they tend to split along a three to two ratio. So if you have a group of five people, this will tend to split to a conversation of three people and a conversation of two. You can use this to your advantage. If you see a group of four people, you can go up and join them and causing the split. What once was a very intimidating group of four has now been split to a conversation of three or just a one-on-one -on -one with someone else. And also talk to the wallflowers. Think of how relieved and how grateful you feel when someone comes up to you when you're feeling shy and alone at a party and they introduce themselves. You could be that person for someone else who is feeling just as left out, just as awkward as you are. That having been said, if you don't know anyone at the party or you know very few people at the party and you're not really feeling like you can go up to people on your own, then rely on the people that you do know. 
not for your entire social engagement, but to introduce you around. What you should do is talk to your friends, or even better, talk to the host and say, hey, I don't really know anyone here. Could you introduce me around? And you're off. This is a question that causes some confusion at times, because people tend to conflate being an introvert with being shy, and that's not true. You can have shy extroverts just as you can have loud and outgoing introverts. All introversion and extroversion means is how you expend and recharge your emotional energy. Extroverts recharge their emotional energy when they are around other people, and they feel more wiped out and lethargic when they're left on their own. Introverts are the opposite. They burn out very quickly when they're around other people, but recharge their energy when they're on their own. And while this may not necessarily be a problem at smaller, more sedate, more intimate gatherings like a dinner party, bigger parties tend to mean that introverts crash early. Larger, rowdier parties are like a platonic ideal of how to drain an introvert's batteries. So how could you, as an introvert, get through a party without feeling like you're dead to the world 30 minutes into it? And the first thing you want to do is rest up before you go. If you are trying to go to a party right after a long day of dealing with other people, your batteries are not going to be at full charge anyway. Better to go home, take a little time on your own, and just kind of recoup your energy before heading out. Just make sure that you don't make the classic mistake of losing all of your momentum to go out in the first place. While you're at the party, don't assume that you have to talk to everybody or meet everyone. You don't need to be a social butterfly going from group to group to group to group in order for a party to be a success. There is really nothing wrong with focusing on smaller, tighter groups. And honestly, for an introvert, it may be better to deal with people on a one-to-one -one level and having more deeper and more focused conversations than going from larger groups and having to spread your attention and your energy around. The other thing you want to do is build in breaks for yourself so that you can go and recharge before you're completely out of energy. Now, depending on how quickly you expend your energy, this could be anywhere from every 30 minutes to every hour. What you want to do is stake out some places where you can go and chill out when you need a break. At a lot of parties, any backstage area, maybe the kitchen, maybe the backyard, hell, maybe the front yard, are all good places to go and just get away from things and recharge your batteries. There may also be just a quieter room with a chair that you can stake out. If you're a smoker, maybe the smoking area is a good place for you to go to get away from everything. Now remember, you don't really need to make any excuses or justify why you need to take a break. Most people these days will understand what you mean when you say that you need to take an introvert break. Or you could just say, no, I just need to get some fresh air or I just need to get away from the excitement for a minute. Small talk is a topic that could be a video all of its own. And hey, if you want that, hit up the comments. A lot of people would love it if they could skip small talk entirely and go straight for the real shit. Thing is, small talk isn't just meaningless fluff that you toss around until you run down the clock and now you're okay to talk about more meaningful topics. Even among our close friends, we don't go immediately into the deeper subjects. We spend a little time catching up. Hey, what are you up to? How are you feeling? What have you been doing? Small talk is social lubricant, if you will, especially when you're meeting someone for the first time. You're not just saying things to be polite, you're building connections. And for forming the bridges that let you eventually move into talking about the more meaningful and deeper topics. Think of conversation as a highway. If you try to drive straight onto it, you run the risk of going into oncoming traffic and causing an accident. Small talk is the conversational equivalent of the on-ramp to the highway. It's what brings you up into the speed of traffic and lets you merge in seamlessly without causing problems. Without small talk, going straight into a conversation tends to look something like this. Anyway, how is your sex life? The key to making small talk less annoying and less frustrating is not to see it as throwing meaningless but polite jabber into the air, but as a way of connecting with the person you're talking to. I go into this more in my video on how to create a powerful connection, but 
what you want to do is focus on asking them questions and getting to know the other person. Think of it like a game. There is something fascinating about this person and it is your objective to figure out what it is. The more that you get to know them, the more connections you build, the more points of commonality you find, the better able you will be to segue into those deeper, more meaningful conversations. By the time you're at that point, you will found these things you have in common, these shared interests, these points of commonality that will make going to other more meaningful topics that much easier. Plus, you'll have made a new friend. One of the things that comes up a lot, especially with bigger parties like New Year's Eve or wedding receptions with an open bar or really any party where the alcohol is flowing freely, is how to manage your booze intake. A lot of time these parties can turn into amateur hour where otherwise reasonable people end up becoming giant sloppy messes who are going to do unspeakable things to the only available bathroom. And while most people are just fine, there are those who turn into obnoxious drunks without having even realized it. Now, while the the obvious answer is just don't drink or don't get drunk, a lot of people have honestly never learned how to handle their liquor. And if you're the sort of person who uses a little alcohol to try to overcome your initial shyness, it's very easy to end up overdoing things before you even realize it. That first drink didn't do the trick, so you're going to get a second one, and while you're waiting for your second one to kick in, you realize that you don't want to look like that loser who's just hugging the wall, so you head over to the bar. And then before you know it, you think you're being charming and suave and delightful, but you're actually just a blathering mess and everyone's politely tolerating you and hoping that your friends will come collect you already. Not that I've ever done this. Repeatedly. The key to maintaining that warm, pleasant glow and not crossing the line into, dude, what the hell is wrong with you, is to pace yourself and keep track of what you've been drinking. It's pretty easy to underestimate how much you've actually had to drink, especially if you're having mixed drinks, and how much it's affecting you. Just because the room's not spinning doesn't mean that you're not trashed. A good rule of thumb is to have one glass of water with each alcoholic beverage. Not only does this mean that you won't be letting your alcohol consumption get ahead of you, but it's also going to keep you hydrated, which means that you're not going to have a motherfucker of a hangover the next day. And yes, you want water here, not juice, not mixers, and definitely not soda. The caffeine in soda is a diuretic, which means that you're going to end up in line for the bathroom even more often. The other thing to do is to savor your drink. You'll enjoy it more, you'll look more sophisticated, and most importantly, you'll realize that Jaeger tastes like Satan's fermented piss long before all your other friends. Remember, if you have to shoot it, it's shitty alcohol. <laughs> The single most common request I get about parties is, hey, I met this person at a party and I thought we really hit it off, but I didn't get their number and now I don't know what to do. And in this day and age, the obvious answer is go find them on Facebook, but that has its risks. It can be a little bit creepy because not everybody is going to be comfortable with a friend request out of the blue from someone that they only vaguely remember meeting once. This is why the better answer is to make it a habit to ask to stay in contact with them while you're still talking to them. If you've been having a good conversation with someone for, say, 20 minutes, and it's been really solid, there's been a lot of back and forth, and it's not just polite laughter and them giving half of their attention to you, then there's really no reason not to say, hey, I'd love to stay in contact with you. You want to make this something that you do automatically so that not only does it feel natural when you ask, but you don't forget to do it and then kick yourself while you're scrambling through Facebook and Instagram trying to find them. There are a couple of ways of doing this. One is to simply ask them out on a date. Like I said in my video about how to not get ghosted, what you want to do is say, hey, I am doing X thing at Y time and I think you'd really love it and I would love to take you. Yeah? Great. Let me get your number so we can make plans. But sometimes there's not really a way to make this happen organically, or you may not feel like you're in a position where you can actually ask for a date, but you do want to stay in touch with them and build that connection. This is when the universal adoption of smartphones and social media comes into play. If things have been going well, but you're not quite ready to ask for a date, then what you want to say is, hey, I'm really enjoying talking to you, is it okay if I add you on Facebook? If they say yes, then you can pull out your phone and hand it to them and say, hey, could you pull up your profile? You send the friend request, 
they get it, everything is good. Now, not only are you not going to forget about it when you get home, but you're also not going to be scratching your head going like, wait, which one is the profile I want? The next day, shoot him a quick PM or a post and say, hey, it was great meeting you at the party last night. Hope your hangover wasn't as bad as mine. This helps avoid the, hey, wait, why did I add you? That leads to them never actually responding to you and then quietly unfollowing and unfriending you later on. Of course, getting the phone number or the social media connection isn't the end of the conversation. It's the start of a new one. It's on you to keep the conversational ball rolling and to keep building that connection so that you can lead to seeing each other again when it's just the two of you. Good luck. Hey, thanks for checking out the latest video. If you have party questions that I didn't get to, share them in the comments below and I'll answer them there. If you want to get in on this, if you have a short dating question or you have a topic that you'd like to hear more about, hit me up. Either share it in the comments below or send it to me at doc at drnerdlove.com with for YouTube in the subject. And as we go into the new year, if you want more dating advice, check out my books. I wrote them. You want to read them, links to buy them are in the show notes below. And if you do check them out, leave a review on Amazon and Goodreads. That is a huge Christmas present to any author. If you're enjoying the video, then you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button, share it around with all your friends. If you're really enjoying the series, if you feel like you're getting a lot out of it and it's really helping and you'd like to help support the channel, then consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash drnerdlove. Even $1 is a huge help. And don't forget, follow me on Twitter at at drnerdlove. Join the Facebook page at facebook.com slash drnerdlove. And as always, smash that logo to subscribe, check out my other videos, and I will be back with you in the new year with more tips about love, sex, and dating. Later.